Why is self-awareness important? Self-awareness is a staple in your personal growth and in your success and your emotional intelligence all at once. It will expand across every single aspect of your life and I'm about to explain why right now. I'm Reggie Bryant and if you're new here, consider hitting the subscribe button in the lower right corner. I make videos every single week and I have this entire series about emotional intelligence coming out. Stay tuned. So as I mentioned in my last video, self-awareness is literally the foundation of emotional intelligence. And as you know, emotional intelligence is one of the biggest skill sets that you can have as a human being in general. So first of all, it allows you to take an honest look at yourself. It helps you assess how you're feeling, why you're feeling that feeling, and how you react knowing that you have that feeling. It allows you to take a very honest look at yourself, the good, the bad, the ugly. What do you see in yourself that you like? What do you see in yourself that you love? What do you see in yourself that you hate, that you would like to change? What do you see? How do you feel about this? How do you feel about that? Why do you feel that way about that? You can really dig deep and understand why it is that you're feeling a certain way about a certain situation or about a certain comment that somebody said or even just body language. You get to look in deep within yourself and take an honest look. That's why self-awareness is so important. And then you get to look at your emotions. Why did that make me angry? Why did that kind of upset me? Why did I get so happy when this person said this? When you get to figure that out, you kind of figure out your buttons, like your emotional triggers, like why does that get on my nerves so much? And when you do, it'll probably blow your mind because you probably never thought about it. Because most people don't look at themselves, they, most people don't self-reflect. Self-awareness is important because you can literally just see yourself where you are and then imagine the best version of yourself and then seal that gap. Second, Self-awareness is, is more than just knowing what makes you tick, what annoys you, what makes you upset, knowing that you're irritable when you're hungry. It's more than just that. It's also getting to know yourself on a personal level. See, here's something you should know. Most people don't even know themselves. They don't even know who they are. That's why so many people are trying to please everybody else because they don't even know what they want. How crazy is that? I'll tell you something that self-awareness is really about. Knowing your core values, what do you stand for and why do you stand for it? What principles do you live by? If you don't know what your core values are, I challenge you to write them down because you probably have a lot of them. And then here's the thing, when you write them down and you see them on paper, think to yourself, do you act according to these principles and these core values that you have for yourself? Because a lot of times we act the opposite of what our core values are makes you really wonder huh like if one of your core values is kindness even though you're overwhelmed or stressed out are you still able to treat people around you with kindness that's one simple example but i bet you for most people the answer is no because most people cannot handle stress i mean what if one of your core values is peace and relaxation do you embody that real quick comment down below do you know what your core values are if so what are they list a few down below and i'll list a few of mine as well so the, the deep part of this is you know if, when, when you can take the two things that i just gave you and and look at yourself you can really find a ton of things about yourself that you love and you know when you look into yourself and you can find things find reason why you should love yourself and why you should really have confidence in yourself well that gives other people outside of you multiple reasons to love you multiple reasons to like you and, and admire and, and respect you and then you'll find a bunch of things that you don't like one of the sad things is when you look into yourself one of the most vivid things to you are, are going to be things that you don't like about yourself because when you take a, a strong look at yourself and you're very honest about it you're going to see more bad than good at first. And that's that's normal. That's how it's supposed to be because people aren't that honest with themselves. And so the bad things are going to definitely stick out at first. But that's what's important about these two is because they 
perfectly molds together so that you can see yourself for what you really are and you can make a conscious effort to improve yourself amongst those things. But how in the world do you put these into action? So here's how you put this into action. Here's some actionable advice that you can apply right now. Actually write down how you feel. And some people might be rolling their eyes at this, but seriously, write down how you feel. I'm telling you, there is a power to this. I can't even explain to you how much it has helped me. If you're somebody with a cluttered mind or if you have anxiety or if you're constantly thinking about the past or the future or you just feel overwhelmed, write down how you feel. I made this a habit in the morning when I wake up just to jot down in, the, in an app. It's called Morning Pages. Literally, you just you just write. You just type, 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 type until the characters are full or whatever. You, you really write down how you feel when you wake up, why you feel that way. And for one, you get it from your brain to a completely different file, which is on your phone. And it's not like overloading your brain. And it's, it's amazing. First of all, it's a stress relief. You can actually read and be like, oh, that's how I feel. Because you might think you realize how you feel in your mind, but like your mind has so much information in it. It is literally overloaded. Do it. Trust me. You will thank me. And I will link that app down below. All right. Two. Stop identifying your emotions as good or bad. Now, I got this from a podcast from Hal Elrod, and he is amazing with emotional intelligence and self-awareness, so I'm going to link that down below as well. But I was listening to this one podcast, and he's saying emotions are not good or bad. They're just neutral. They are what you make them. So if you're angry, most people associate that with being a bad emotion, but really, anger can serve you. And I actually made a video about stress and anger. If you want to check that out after this, it really goes hand in hand with what Hal was saying in his podcast. It's like, you can have any emotion and make it serve you. You can turn anger into drive. You can turn sadness into consistency. You can turn anything into anything. And once you really are able to do that, you'll be able to step yourself up to the next freaking level, I promise you. And what number three goes hand in hand with that, don't be fooled by bad emotions. You know how when you feel really bad or really down or you're like in a really dark mood for some reason and it seems like it's just a ripple effect of one bad thing happening after another and it's like suddenly you hate your significant other, suddenly you don't want to talk to any family member, suddenly you hate your job, you hate the food you eat, you hate your body. It's almost like you hate yourself. It's like a dark cloud is over your head. And that's really an unnecessary way to feel because things are going to go wrong. Things are going to go terribly wrong sometimes in life. And we have to adapt. We have to keep pressing forward and understand that bad things will happen. But that doesn't mean everything is all bad. And a lot of our pain is self-inflicted. So we might have just gotten a bad argument with our significant other or with our family member or something. Or something really bad might have happened at the workplace. But don't allow the way that you think about the situation. Don't don't think that other people think bad of you because of a situation. Somebody could chew you out and get on you and, and tell you about yourself and still think the world of you. But when you make things even worse than what they are, well, they become just that, worse than what they were. So my advice there would be, don't ponder on it. I mean, reflect on it, think about how you can better yourself, but move on because the more you think about it, the more pain you're going to feel, honestly. And on the flip side, number four, don't let good emotions control you. Have you ever been really happy and like in a really good mood and then somebody asks you something, you're like, yeah, let's, let's do that. And then it's like, you instantly regret it after you did it. Let's spontaneously take this trip out to Hawaii and get round trip tickets and Next thing you know, you're spending thousands of dollars because you did it the day of and you didn't plan. That's just an example. But bottom line is when you're happy, you don't need to make decisions. And when you're really upset, you don't need to make decisions. You need to wait till you're in a calm and collected mood. And you can really think about what you're doing. All right. And lastly, physically feel your emotions. Cannot stress that enough. So the way that we're wired, we physiologically feel our emotions before our mind is even aware of it. If you've ever had an upset stomach or 
uh, a fast heart rate or really tense muscles in certain situations, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you might not realize that you're afraid or anxious or upset at the time, but you are. And it's way before you're mentally aware of it. Your emotions overwhelm your body and because of that, your body responds to it. Your mind is unfortunately the last to know, which is why people don't realize why they act the way they act in certain situations because of it. Because they don't realize how they feel because they don't know themselves well enough because they don't self-reflect. And this is why self-awareness is so important. So here's a way that you can actually just, just do an experiment. Like it's like a form of meditation, but not really. Just, you know, sit down, Close your eyes and just think of certain situations that make you feel different emotions, be it happiness, anger, sadness, whatever. And just feel how your body feels when you think of that scenario. And you could be thinking of something random that maybe you don't even know you have emotions about, but your body is going to always respond first. Always remember that. Guys, if you like this video, give me a like, hit the subscribe button. I make a video every single week about personal growth, entrepreneurship, and success. And I would love, love to see you in the next video. Control yourself, control your finances, control your life so you can live on your own terms. Thanks for watching.